Well, with the Blue Jays trading Kenrys Morales a day before the season starts, and with the older players starting to dwindle away from the Blue Jays roster, there were only a few names on the list left that we thought might go. And Justin Smoke was one of them, and Kevin Pillar was the other. And Kevin Pillar has been traded to the San Francisco Giants. It's, uh... Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to watch Kevin go. I mean, we've all heard his story about you know how he was always a, a low end prospect and no one talks about him, and then he became Superman here in Toronto and obviously helped lead us to those promised uh, playoff, I guess, rounds in fifteen and sixteen. However, as a thirty year old, and I'm assuming he's coming up very soon to free agency. You know, the Jays wanted to get something back for him. I, I get it. They have some younger players. And with this move being made, they do call up Anthony Alford. So, they're one of the top four prospects of the Blue Jays. So, there you go. But I think the part that hurts the most is just losing a guy like Kevin Pillar. And knowing what he did for this team, the organization, the country, and how much he meant to all of us. Right? I mean... It, it, Especially watching that interview, if you guys did not see that interview Kevin Pillar had, uh, what, today, about the trade, he's in tears, you know, and he, clearly he didn't want to go, and clearly this place meant the world to him, because it gave him his first opportunity, and the opportunity, and, and it's hard to watch him go, it, it really is, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the other ones, the Bautistas, we were all kind of over and done with that, Donaldson, we were all angry, so just get him the heck out of here, Tulo, we're like, get him the hell out of here, Edwin, yeah, it sucked. But Kevin Pillar was just the guy that grinded. He did his thing on a nightly basis. He gave you amazing defense. He was always humble and always amazing. He always did everything right. You know, and now he's gone. And it sucks. It really does. But for the future of the Toronto Blue Jays, it kind of had to happen, right? And it, it does suck. It really does. Now, who did the Jays get back? Well, they got Alan Hansen, who is who's pretty much... You know, an everyday player for the San Francisco Giants. I'm going to pull up his stats here for you guys so you guys can know what he's all about. So last year, he played 110 games, uh, which is big, right? Obviously, his first uh, that was his most played season and uh, with San Francisco. He had 110 games, 300, uh, 294 at-bats. He had 17 doubles. Again, nothing crazy. He hit 252. Nothing crazy. Again, you're not going to get a whole lot for Kevin Pillar. Right, but you got a guy who who could probably play the infield for this team now. Uh, ideally, with the infield as cluttered as it is, it might be really interesting to see playing time. They also get Dr Derek Law, twenty-eight year old uh, reliever. I mean, I don't really know what the heck you're gonna see from him. He pitched what seven games for the for the San Francisco Giants last year, and had a seven point four three ERA. Again, I guess bullpen depth if you want to look at it that way. But I'm if I'm not mistaken, the biggest piece of the of the trade. Was getting young one, Juan de Paula, Paula, Paula. I'm gonna go Paula because that's that's pretty cool. The 1997 baby, so I'm a 96 and I'm 22, so you guys can do the math if you guys want to. Um, I think his birthday is in September or something like that, 22nd, something like that from the, from the Dominican Republic, and his numbers through the minor leagues, oh, they're very good. His uh, in 2016 was his highest ERA, his highest of 3.07. It was awesome. Last year, I mean, he pitched 10 games. He had a 2-2 two two record of a 1.71 ERA. And these are all in A ball. Apparently, he has a live arm. He's got a great fastball. His uh, his other pitches might need some work a little bit. But again, this guy's young. He's got a good arm. And for the Blue Jays, you can never have too much pitching. You really can't. You know, and with the Jays prospects coming up, guys like Nate Pearson and, and, and Adam Klofenstein and guys like that, those young pitchers coming up to add another one to that is really good. Now, this video is not really about who they got back. Because really, this isn't about that. It's more about losing Kevin Pillar as a player and as a person. We will never forget his Superman climbing catch there in the left field corner on Jackie Robinson Day because it was number 42 he was wearing that day. I think it was against Tampa as well. And Todd Redmond was on the mound. You know why I remember that? Because I've seen the damn highlights so many times. Last year, robbing Nick Castellanos, laying out in the playoffs and making some big plays. Kevin Pillar has been an Iron Man for this for this organization since he's come up. This guy, I mean, he's been amazing. 
As much as we can talk about the inconsistency and the, the swinging at his face and swinging miles out of the strike zone, in the end, he was Mr. Consistent for the Jays. He was always going to hit you 250. He was going to give you great defense. He's going to sprinkle him 10 to 15 home runs this season. He was going to do his thing. You know, now he's going to go to the National League where, I mean, if you if you love looking at stats, I mean, the National League, I guess you could say, is a better place to hit. So, Kevin Pillar might have great success there. He's going to play in the Bay Area. But the, the, the thing I, the reason why I get Kevin Pillar being so upset, obviously, having his kid here, having her grow up here a little bit, you know, getting married and doing all that crazy stuff. I mean, Kevin Pillar coming up here as a 24-year-old in Toronto, now he's leaving as a 30-year-old man, a father. It's, it's, it's a big thing for him. And um, clearly he loves the city in his quotes from the from the press or I wouldn't say press conference, but from him talking earlier today, he's going to miss this place. And I think as Jays fans, we all are. And I don't know if we play San Francisco at home this year. I really hope we do because I want to see Kevin Pillar back. I want to have him get a standing ovation here, even though it's probably going to only be 15,000 people at the ball game because this is really rough to watch right now. 10,000 people at the game yesterday. That is incredible. That is, that is nuts. That is terrible, really. But, um, guys, I'm not going to make too much of a long video. It's, it's just, it's hard to watch Kevin Pillar go. But we got to keep in our mind, we got to keep in our mindset that it's about the future. It's about the younger players. So just hang in there, keep fighting, and, and this team will will get good very soon. And the, the run of 2015-16 will kind of be in the rear view mirror because we'll be looking towards w the future and the now, right? But for right now, guys, we can just sit back and enjoy Kevin Pillar's career as a Blue Jay. The six, I think it was six years he had with the Jays. I got a question for you. The last question before I wrap this up. Your fondest Kevin Pillar memory. What is it? I mean, I, for me... I mean, we could we could argue, we obviously say that's that wall climbing catch, but for me, I don't know. I, I look I look at um, in the playoffs when he made that huge diving catch, you know, uh, coming in and making a huge diving. I think it was against Texas or Kansas. I mean, I'm not sure. It was, it was that year of 15, but he. he I mean, wh what was your fondest Kevin Pillar memory? I want to hear your guys' thoughts towards this. What your thoughts are on the trade. Uh, and all that stuff. I know people are going to be angry. I know people are going to get mad at Shapiro and Atkins. But, guys, you want to have room for these younger players to play. And I understand Kevin Pillar is 30 and you do want to have a veteran guy around. But Kevin Pillar would play every single day. And that's losing a spot for somebody else. And I hate to say it, but we saw it coming a little bit. We've heard the discussions with the Giants now for quite some time. So for, for all of it to happen... It was kind of, you know, the the writing was on the wall, really. And I guess the next guy is Justin Smoke, and I, I, will he be moved? I, I don't know. The reason I say that is because now that you move Morales, is there a need to move Justin Smoke? I don't know. I really don't know, all right? So, you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoy this video, and you guys... Are, 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 are upset about Kevin Pillar being moved. Hit that like button. I do appreciate that. I know I am, but I know why it happened. And I, I know we got to look forward to the future of this uh, deal for the Blue Jays. All right, I'm here. Your guys, uh, hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below, guys, your thoughts on this trade. How do you think the Jays did when it comes to the return? Also, like I said, your thoughts on Kevin Pillar and your fondest memory of KP, a.k.a. Superman, uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays. It's going to... it's. It's going to be a rough little while for us Jays fans, and, and 162 games is going to be a grind for all of us, but um, we'll get through it like we did the Leafs back in that year where they had P.A. Parento as their leading scorer. So well, we'll get through it. It might, it might take a little bit longer than that, but you guys are here. I'm here. Don't worry. I ain't going anywhere, all right? So um, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition. It's going to be tomorrow afternoon. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys. Uh, it'll be Raptors edition on Wednesday, tomorrow night, as they are in Brooklyn taking on the Nets, looking for their fifth fifth win in a row, and look to continue on this nice little roll here to end the season. And as for the Leafs, uh, they take on the Carolina Hurricanes tonight, and i got to get going here. I mean, i got to get going to the game. It's starting pretty soon. 7.30 puck drop there at Scotiabank Arena. Leafs welcoming the Her Carolina Hurricanes to uh, Scotiabank Arena on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. And as for the Blue Jays, guys, like we've talked about many times before, they'll be taking on the Baltimore Orioles in Game 2 of the three-game set tonight. Marcus Stroman, Andrew Kashner are the expected starters, or pretty much the guaranteed starters, in 
tonight's game. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.